You are watching HCN, Herrick's Television Network, Concerts. that you're going to hear or see tonight have done a lot of amazing things um, that I want to recognize in the music area. We have with us here, and I'm going to ask them to stand up when I'm all done. We have one student who participated in the All National Festival. You can clap. We have 31 students, that's a lot, 31 students that were accepted to all state. And we have eight students that are gonna be going to all Eastern in March. So I've been here a really long time and I don't remember ever having eight students going to All Eastern. That's a testament to all the hard work by all of our students and our teachers to lead us to this place. A lot of districts are lucky to have one and we have so many. So congratulations. Can all those students stand up really quick? Anyone of those three? And there's also a lot of other great things to come, and I'm going to let your conductors explain that to you during their performance, but we're going to get started. And one more thing before we start, I'd like to recognize our sound. Mr. Cliston's up there in the booth helping out tonight. And I'm going to proudly hand over the microphone to Mrs. Burke and the Chamber Orchestra. Enjoy the concert. Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here tonight. We're going to get started with some Mendelssohn, and as you'll notice, we're going to try it from memory. So, good luck to us. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll maybe get back on stage quickly. I'm just going to give a little bit of an uh, introduction to our next piece. Um, there are a couple of really interesting sort of coincidences that happened with this piece. It is Gustav Mahler's Adagietto from his Symphony No. 5. And this is one of the most beautiful and romantic pieces in the orchestral literature. In fact, um, Gustav Mahler wrote it right after he first met Alma Mahler, who would become his wife. And he was so taken with her that the story goes that they immediately started writing letters back and forth to court. And um, instead of sending a letter, he sent this piece. And when you hear it, I think you'll understand just how incredible that was. They ended up getting married. And they, unlike a lot of those sort of figures that you hear about in history, they had a really beautiful marriage. They really, really had a lot of love. So on a personal note, tonight is my three-year wedding anniversary. <laughs> and I actually walked down the aisle to the opening of this piece. Um, which is purely coincidental. I totally didn't realize that I was like programming it for February. So it's just one of those beautiful, like the stars aligned coincidences. But I walked down the aisle to this piece played by a number of hair extreme orchestra students who came and played at my wedding. So a bunch of your older siblings, I think, were actually there. Um, so this is just a very sort of full circle moment for me. In another full circle way, we have um, Jocelyn Chu up here on the harp. Wave. Hi. <laughs> So, when Jocelyn was in like fourth or fifth grade, and I don't remember which, I went to a Searingtown Elementary School concert, and I was talking with Miss Soma, and I, was, I met her mother for the first time, and I was saying, wow, she's so great. Oh, you know, she also plays harp. And I looked this like nine or 10 year old child directly in the eye, and I said, there's a piece. It's called the Adagietto by Gustav Mahler. And when you're in high school, you can't quit harp, because we're gonna do it. And I would just like to publicly thank Jocelyn Chu when she was like 10 years old for holding up her end of that bargain. Because that's, that's a long game, but here we are, she's a junior, and we are doing it. And, and we're gonna do it at a national competition in a month. So anyway, enough stories. This is Mahler's Adagietto. It's long, but it's beautiful. You're gonna love it.
and now for something completely different. I won't talk too much, but this is by a good friend of mine. Her name is Rina Esmail. She's a phenomenal Indian-American composer. And this is a piece that she wrote for symphony orchestra that I really liked and wanted to do. So she said she would rearrange it for me for string orchestra, and she did. So um, Rina, out there in the world, thank you, wherever you are. And uh, here's Testament from Vishwas.
so much. We're going to do a quick reset. Stick around for the Chamber Choir. They're absolutely phenomenal. Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening.
Um, at that time, we hope that you will give us a raucous applause and uh, feel free to shout and yell and holler and hopefully uh, stand up or whatever because we really think that uh, I think that we'll deserve it at the end. So the pieces that we're doing are we're performing at Carnegie Hall on March 20th. We have been invited by one of the top choral conductors in the United States, Dr. Amanda Quist of um, University of Miami. So we will be part of a choir that will have 250 kids in it from all over the country. And uh, so this is what we're working on. Uh, enjoy the rest of the music. Thank you. I always forget. I know they're laughing at me over here. So, uh, in light of the news that's going on, we would really like to dedicate two of uh, one of the pieces to um, to the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and in Syria, and also those who have suffered as a result or been affected by gun violence. And that will be even when he is silent. I hope that you take the time to read the words and to learn the background of this piece. So um, that's it. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> and you've had quite a listen. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. You, the range of music you have listened to tonight is stunning. Give yourself a hand. Wow, <laughs> Mendelssohn, Mahler. You know, that Mahler piece was played at Kennedy's funeral, JFK's funeral. That was a request. It's a stunning piece of music, and they play it well in our wonderful chorus on the way to Carnegie. So we would like to, um, actually another piece that had a lot of intensity behind it, that's the Vittorio Giannini Fantasia for band. And Fantasia just means that the composer had free reign to go where they wanted to. But you heard a lot of returning information. But the interesting thing is that at the very end, it kind of finally resolves all that tension. It's actually a modern neo-composer, neo-romantic from the 1960s. So there are many bedrock pieces in the band literature, and that's one of them. Daniel French who wrote as if one, uh, this next piece by Daniel French, I always get it right. As one listens to the rain, I just think about the rain, but this is actually written by a young composer at the time, in 2011, he's now in California writing for film, I believe. But he wrote this piece and it's really about this poem that's underneath this melodic line and above is this rain music. And it's quite, it's quite wonderful. So as you're drawn into the sound, just listen for the rain music on top and this wonderful melody that he wrote in the bottom that's very poetic in its nature. So we hope you enjoy this piece by Daniel French from 2011. It's about six minutes.
Nice to have a harp in your school. Not all high schools have a harp. Jackson Prince of the New York Youth Orchestra. We just won a Grammy, did you know? We won a Grammy for a couple of performances. And what amazing. Yes, so uh, this last time I'll speak because it's getting late and we all need to go home and rest. So um, this the next piece we'd like to play, The Road Less Traveled by Robert Longfeld. Alice, um, early 2014 was written from the Robert Frost poem, The Road Less Traveled, where you, you, in life you have a fork and you can choose one path to go. Sometimes the one that's bumpy might be the best, but we don't always know. But sometimes the bumpy takes the most courage. So anyway, we love this piece. It's based on an augmented scale. So you're going to hear this harmonic language that's different from anything else we heard tonight. And so be it, since we went around the world tonight, didn't we? And, so, and then we're going to close, uh, as bands do, uh, with a little toe capper. Uh, it's brief. It's called The Crusaders March by our own John Philip Sousa, who actually lived in Manhasset and played around the area, took trains and went around the country with a 35, 40 piece band. It was all the phenomenon back in his day in the early 20th century. So we hope you enjoy that. And thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. I'd like to thank Ms. Arnold and the whole staff and everyone here for uh, really all, just such a great music department. Seems like we're all the way back from the pandemic. So please enjoy. Have a great President's Week, and we'll see you for further concerts, musical in, the, in March. So thank you so much.
watching HT Pirates Television Network concerts.